dude, I'm taking them. Bro, that's too far. No way. Switching to tungsten. I'm taking the shot. Dude, that's still way too far. Don't do it. Letting it rip. So here's the question. At what distance is it possible to down a turkey? 45 yards? 75 yards? How about 100? And not only that, what downrange penetration energy is needed? How many pellets do we need on target to effectively bag a turkey? That's what we're gonna explore today in this video using some scientific data as well as some good old redneck science. Let's down some turkey. Just because a shot's possible doesn't make it an ethical shot. So what is an ethical shot? Well, we're basically gonna say a high probability that when you pull the trigger, you're gonna have a bird that is either expired or immobile in a very short amount of time, right? And that sounds a little bit broad, and I guess it is, because it's not really our job to define the ethics of a shot. Uh, that's your job, actually. We don't want a high likelihood that we're gonna pull the trigger and we're gonna have a wounded bird that runs off, right? So just because something's possible doesn't make it ethical. With that said, in order to have a high degree of confidence, you gotta know a few things. You gotta know your skill level. You gotta know your equipment, your pattern performance at different distances, make sure your optics or your sights are all set. But you also need to know the performance of your shot shell. Because if you change your round, you are gonna get dramatically different results. And we chose today one of the top performing rounds that's available. Like, way outperforms lead, this thing's incredible, so if anything can push the distance, it's this round. So what is this round? It is the Federal Heavyweight TSS, or Tungsten Super Shot. This is 12 gauge, three inch shell, traveling at 1150 feet per second. Two ounces of shot, full of seven and nine shot. So why TSS? Well, Tungsten Super Shot is way more dense than lead. About 60% more dense. Tungsten Super Shot is 18 grams per cubic centimeter, and lead is right around 11. So because you have a more dense object, you can have smaller pellets carrying just as much energy downrange, leads to more penetration, all sorts of stuff. I'm getting ahead of myself, because I got an analogy. If you don't understand, I got a little analogy. Let me grab my balls. Tennis ball and a golf ball. They weigh about the same. If I were to whip this tennis ball at you, you might not like it, but it's not gonna hurt real bad. But if I were to whip this at you at the same velocity, it's gonna hurt a whole lot more. That's kind of the difference between lead and tungsten, right? Hope that made sense. So as we see what the limits of tungsten super shot are, we're gonna be comparing it to a very common turkey load, number five lead traveling at 1200 feet per second. Now we're not gonna actually shoot the number five lead. We have the data. We talked to an engineer at Federal and we got the data of penetration energy over distances for both the seven and the nine shot of the tungsten super shot as well as number five lead. So we have that energy data because it's not gonna be enough to just look at pattern performance downrange. Did we put several pellets in the head? That's not enough. We need to know penetration energy. In preparation of this video, I went down a deep rabbit hole looking for statistical data, any studies that I could find. Jordan and I were joking about this video and we said maybe we should get some turkeys from a farm chain them up and shoot them, see what happens. We realized probably not gonna go well on YouTube, but in my research, I found a person that did that. It was in a scientific double blind study with a 95% confidence level. Tom Roster performed this study. There was a lot of information to it. I'll put a link down in the description if you're interested in reading about it yourself. But just to summarize, they took a whole bunch of farm-raised turkeys. They also took a bunch of turkey heads from dead turkeys. And they shot them at various distances with different loads. And then they basically did autopsies and x-rays to look at how many pellets went into the head and neck area, and then how many actually hit the vertebrae or the skull area. Now they separated the shot birds into three categories. Category one, they called B1. Basically, the bird was expired or immobile within 30 seconds, and they were able to recover it. The second one was, or B2, the bird was shot, wounded, was mobile, but they were able to recover. And then B3, the third category, was a wounded animal that was able to run off. That's what we don't want. So long study short, what they found is that all turkeys that fell into that B1 category, that first category, they had numerous hits to the head and neck. And even more than that, they had hits 
to the vertebrae and skull uh, with enough penetration to pass through. So what they found with that is that it took a minimum average pellet strike of 6.8 in the head and neck area for a turkey to have a 90%, I believe it was 90%, don't quote me on that one, chance of that B1 category one level. Now, they also found that there was a minimum average pellet strike of 2.8 in the vertebrae and skull area. So as we go through this today and we shoot targets at various distances, we're gonna be looking at how many pellets are in the head and neck area, as well as how many pellets are in the vertebrae and skull area to determine if it's a good shot. Right? It's not enough to get a few in the neck, a few in the head. There is a standard based on a study, so that's what we're gonna follow. In this study, they found the best performing load was number five, lead shot. Now, they just did lead and steel. They didn't do tungsten super shot, and we know that tungsten's gonna way outperform lead as far as penetration energy. But the question is, can we maintain enough pattern density downrange to get the appropriate number of hits? in the target. We have a shoot and see type turkey target set up with ballistic gel behind it, just so we can visually see what the penetration level is. We're gonna be shooting at 45, we're gonna shoot at 60, we're gonna shoot at 75, then we're gonna go all the way to 100 just to push the limits, and that's the furthest data we have on penetration energy. But I've had enough sitting, let's get to shooting. As far as equipment we're rocking with today, we got the Mosberg 835 pump shotgun. I took out the choke tube, put in a Carlson's heavyweight TSS choke tube made for this round. Falcon Strike multi-fit pad on the back because these rounds, they kick the tar out of you and I'm gonna be shooting quite a bit today. And then I have the Holosun red dot on there to help keep me on target. And oh, hey, by the way, anything that I mentioned almost anything that I mentioned there's a link and probably a discount code in the description, so check that out. Along with these sweet new ESS glasses in camo, mossy oak, I believe. Looking pretty sharp. Ready? So about $7 later, and about an hour later, we've counted all the pellets in this shot shell. Now, a number five, three inch lead has about 225 pellets. This has 570, give or take. We might have missed one or two, but give or take 570 pellets going down range. Not only is there more pellets, but more energy than lead. So this 45 shouldn't be a problem, but let's start off at 45. Now at 45 yards, penetration energy on the number seven, we are looking at 490 and we're looking at pounds per foot over inches squared. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but this is penetration energy, not foot pounds energy, but penetration. Because a smaller object that is carrying less foot pounds of energy can actually have more penetration energy. So this is, Probably a little bit better to look at, but the number seven's 490. The number nine's 338. And the number five lead at 45 yards would be 212. With that said, let's shoot. Woo-wee! We're not shooting target loads anymore. That gun jumped on me. All right, so check this out. This is definitely a turkey that's not going anywhere. We put a total of 32 pellets in the head and neck area, 14 of which went into the vertebrae and the skull area, so no doubt about it. And when we look at the penetration on this thing, like we had a lot of pellets actually coming out this backside. Let's see what that looks like. A bunch of them actually fully went through. You can see them on the outside here. That is so cool. That is a ton of energy. Most of those look like the number sevens. This one's been used up. So let's move her back to 60. Back at 60 yards, seven shot, 388. Nine shot, 250. And the number five lead would be 145. So as we can see with both the seven and the nine shot, we still have more penetration energy at 60 yards than that lead number five does at 45. So here we go. Boom. So looking at this one here at 60 yards, I'm not sure if we got our full pattern on this, but we still had 19 pellets in the head and neck, five of which, that's down from 14 at 45, five of which are in the vertebrae and skull area. So definitely this turkey is gonna expire in pretty quick fashion. Good penetration still. Some of the pellets almost exited the backside. That looks really good. I'd be real happy with this at 60, but what about 75? 
that one is gonna be interesting. All right, folks, 75 yards. The number seven shot is at 312 now. The number nine is at 195, about 17 less than what number five lead is at 45 yards. So we now have less penetration energy out of the number nine shot. Lead at this distance would be 112. So pretty significant difference still. I'm real curious, are we gonna get enough pellets in the head and neck to say this is a down turkey. Whew. Out of 470 pellets, we put two into the vertebrae, none into the skull. Total of 14 pellets landed in the head and neck. According to the standard in that study, they said an average minimal hit of 2.6 in the vertebrae skull. This doesn't meet that. And to be honest, this is the third time we have shot at a target at 75. We are just not convinced with the results that we're seeing. You got things like wind drift potentially coming into play, maybe drop in elevation. If you pull your shot just a little bit, there's variables now at 75 yards that are making this less consistent than I would like to see. So would I feel comfortable pulling off a shot at 75? Probably not. 60 looked pretty good. I was happy with 60. 75, we're getting out a little too far. Penetration energy, is still there, but we're starting to get closer to that, what I would say, borderline. But I'd like to see in the comments, what do you think? Would you shoot TSS at 75 yards? 570 pellets, two hit in the vertebrae. So uh, I don't think I would take that shot if it were me, but I'd love to hear from you because guess what? Thank God, you're all not me. <laughs> we did put a pattern on paper just to really see what we were working with. We found that our point of aim and our point of impact, our point of impact was left of our point of aim. Now, what this shows is still a lot of pellets on paper, holy smokes. But what it's starting to show is quite a few gaps. And that is what's a little bit concerning about taking the shot and wanting to have a high probability that if you take a good shot, you're gonna put enough pellets in the target. But if we were to take like a turkey head, this is my nice turkey head, our point of impact was, I'd say about there. Point of aim was there, so we had a little either drift or the optic was off. We have one pellet there. That's a hit, right in the schnoz. Two pellets, maybe that hits the vertebrae, maybe it doesn't. We're starting to see enough gaps and all this cross grid are, are gaps. And so while there's still a lot of pellets on paper, our likelihood of putting them where they need to go becomes less likely. So that's what concerns me about shooting this at 75 yards. Yes, I think it has enough energy. Yes, there's, I mean, if you, Shot your turkey here. This looks more like a dinosaur turkey. I mean, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There's still a good chance you're gonna hit this turkey, but we're starting to increase the likelihood that you're gonna wound it. So that's on paper at 75. But out of curiosity, I think we should step it back to 100. See what happens when we take that 100 yard shot. See if we can even get any pellets in the turkey. Let's do it. So at 100 yards, the number seven shot in this round is at 195. Neither the sevens or the nines are carrying as much penetration energy as lead is at 45 yards. And remember, we only have, what was it, 130, 140 of the number sevens in here. So likelihood that we put a number seven into the vertebrae or skull, I'm guessing is pretty unlikely. In fact, a big challenge I'm gonna have is putting that red dot in a clear aiming point. Like it's gonna cover most of the turkey's head. But, hey, let's see what happens. This tells me exactly what I wanted to know. This is probably a dead turkey. Very well could be. We got two in the vertebrae, and then one close to the skull and the head, one just a beak shot, that's not gonna do much. This could potentially kill the turkey. Now, our penetration energy is getting pretty low. I believe it was at 195 on the sevens. But are these sevens? That's hard to say. We'd have to cut this block open. But based on seeing the penetration here, most pellets are only an inch or so, maybe an inch and a quarter deep. There's a few that are maybe just over two inches, two and a half at most. Those are probably our number sevens. These are probably our number nines. So putting number nines in a turkey at 100 yards 
very well may not have enough energy to actually penetrate the vertebrae. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm not taking this shot. Is it possible to kill a turkey at 100 yards? Absolutely. You put some number sevens in that vertebrae, but what is the likelihood? When you pull that trigger, are you saying there's a 90% chance? I don't think so. I think it's significantly less than that. The shot shell has the performance downrange to do a lot of damage, you know, even to 80, 90 yards, 100, we're really starting to push it, but the big thing here is pattern performance, right? You can only maintain a pattern dense enough so far down range, and this is what we're seeing. Even if we have the energy, we don't have the pattern performance. It was getting pretty sketchy at 75 even. So I wanna hear from you guys. Where are you drawing that line of a shot that you'll take? Is it 45, 65, 75? Would you take the 100 yard shot? There's no doubt about it. TSS is some bad stuff. And when I say bad, I mean lethally bad, but it has its limitations. And I'd really love to hear from you guys after seeing what you've seen today, knowing whatever it is you know, what's your opinion? If you were to shoot this load, out to what distance would you feel comfortable shooting it? Put that down in the comments down below. I personally feel like I'm somewhere between 60 and maybe 65 yards. I would feel fairly comfortable. Getting even beyond that, 75, I'm starting to have some question marks. Am I gonna get enough pellets in the areas that are gonna down this bird or is it gonna run off? And then when we got out to 100, I mean, we saw performance drop way off both as far as energy and pattern performance. You just can't hold together that much shot that far down range consistently enough to probably say that's an ethical shot. Absolutely, it is possible, but ethical, that's a big old question mark. Like I said, I'm somewhere between 16, probably 65 yards where I feel pretty comfortable based on my experience today and all the experience I've had before. Now lead, maybe only out to 45, maybe pushing 50 if I got a good pattern at that distance. But this TSS, having this many pellets on hand, whether you're shooting at 45 yards or 60 yards, it doesn't matter. You're gonna increase your odds. And I didn't really make this video to pitch Federal's heavyweight TSS, but I do know if I'm going turkey hunting, I'm using a tungsten, right? I wanna give myself the best chance whether I'm shooting 45 or 65. And I think this does it. So. I'd love to hear in the comments also, what other type videos like this would you like to see? Any other questions you have? What could we have done differently? Should we try it with a different round? Put all your ideas down below and we'll see if we can get to them. But for now, I'm done shooting turkey loads. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, whether you're in the field or in life, you're only gonna hit those shots you're laser focused on. So live target focused. See ya.